This is the Red Copper 5-Minute Chef. Supposedly you can cook meals and snacks easily by just closing the lid and cooking. That's today's review, so let's get right to it. All right, I know what you're thinking. It's a 14-minute review. James, what are you doing 14 minute review for? Well, this is a $40 item, so I figure people who are looking to invest that kind of money in an appliance like this will want to see how it works. So I went overboard and created 11 batches of food for this review. So I had created an index in the description so you can skip around if you want to watch it all. But otherwise, enjoy all 11 batches of the food I create in the 5 Minute Chef. This is the Red Copper 5 Minute Chef. I've just plugged it in, as you can see. The red light is on, which means that it's heating up. It comes with a recipe booklet that has 10 recipes in it. The instructions also have an extra recipe for omelets, so it really you get 11 recipes in total. You're supposed to plug it in to get warm, which it's doing. Whisk two eggs in a bowl, and then when the light's green, you put your eggs in there. Here we go. One to two minutes. That's kind of a big difference between eggs. I'm not sure if it's one or two minutes. I'll go 90 seconds. And then after that, you're supposed to flip the entire unit over. I'm not sure why, if it's cooking from both sides, why you need to do that. I guess maybe gravity when it falls down to the other side. Not totally sure. But as you can see, it says halfway through the cooking, you're supposed to flip the entire device over. So that's what I'm gonna do in about 10 seconds. I definitely heard something move in there when I flipped it. So I guess the eggs fall to the other side and just cook uh, more evenly that way. Okay, I've got the timer set for another 90 seconds. Can you see that? Okay, the 90 seconds is up and I'm gonna flip this over now. I guess I'm supposed to flip it back over because that's where the latch is at. Let's see what we got and, whoa, not bad. Wow, that just came right out, what do you think? I mean, I, I could have put some other ingredients in there, I just kinda wanted to do the simplest version for this demonstration, but I mean, it came right out and it looks like it's cooked pretty evenly. Let me cut this open. One thing I'm noticing, there's no on-off switch in this thing. When you plug it in, it's on. In fact, even when the, this handle's open, the red light is still on, so there's no real way to turn it off except to unplug it. So let's see what the first taste of the 5-Minute Chef tastes like. I don't really think omelet when I eat that. I think just kind of cooked egg, but it is cooked thoroughly. It was fast, so I give it high marks for that. And you really can't submerge this in water because it's an electrical device, so you have to just kind of wipe it out with uh, maybe a sponge with soapy water and then clean that out. The next thing I'm gonna try is this stuffed lava cake. It only, it only requires three ingredients, a half a cup of soda, cake mix, and a candy bar. Now this cake mix would normally take 30, 30 to 35 minutes to make two cakes, but the five minute chef is supposedly gonna take five minutes. So let's see if that actually holds up. It says you're just supposed to put a small layer on the bottom. It's so nonstick, it's, it's hard to spread it out. And then you're supposed to put a candy bar there and then put more on top. All right, I guess that's close enough. Five minutes. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we got. Oh, hey, not bad. Not too shabby. I guess I need to unplug this because I think it's, it's still on. There we go, okay. Let's see. Hmm. As I'm chewing this, the outside's pretty hard, the inside's pretty soft, which actually I kind of like that texture, but some, you don't have a lot of control over it. But if you like that texture, it's actually pretty good. That's the Three Musketeers right there. So I think the cake came out pretty good, but the amount, they say you're gonna split a box of cake mix into two cakes. I'm probably gonna have three or four. And I also had to add more soda than they called for because it was too thick when I did it their way. So you might have to play around the instructions a little bit, but it did cook that mini cake um, in five minutes. Of course, to make three or four cakes, it's gonna take you 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, here we go. Cake number two. Whoops. Probably should have started on this side. Oh, what happened there? Oh no. 
That is not what I expected. And it smells kind of burnt. All right, well, that's how that one turned out, which not too impressive. See all the top stuck up here. Trial and error, I guess. I'm gonna do a third cake and I'm gonna let this cool even more. The other thing is I don't know where to scrape this so it's gonna fall safely. Well, it came out nicely. Stick this one top of there and say, voila, it's perfect. That's right, nobody will notice. I think what may have went wrong on the second cake is that I let it cool for five minutes like the instruction state, but I don't think it was completely cool, so I actually let it cool for 15 minutes this time. I'm gonna clean it off and try the third cake and see if I can get back to the original results I have of the first one. They say to use a sponge and soapy water to clean it out, so I'll do my best. It's coming off, it's just, you, it kind of ends up falling down below. There's a lot of little crevices here where things can get caught and you have to kind of wipe that out. You can't put it in a dishwasher and you can't submerge it in water. Okay, for this third cake, I don't have another candy bar, so I'm just gonna make it plain like this. All right, here we go. Close the latch, five minutes. It's starting to steam or smoke again, so I'm going to try taking this out. Oh, it looks, it looks good. It's only been four minutes. It hasn't not been five, it's been four minutes. All right, and not a lot of residue, a little bit. All right, so we're involving their stuffed lava cake instructions. Number one, you really have to let it completely cool. They say five minutes, it was more like 15 for me. Number two is you have to watch it. I peeked in there and it looked done. If it had gone five minutes, I might've started getting burnt like the last one. So it's a little bit of trial and error to get some of these recipes correct. It did cook three cakes. The fact that I had to let it cool so much between each one, I'm not sure I saved a lot of time over putting it in the oven. All right, the cakes came out pretty good. I think the third one came out the best of those three, but next up it's time for a hamburger. Now there's no instructions for a hamburger in there, but having used a George Foreman grill, I know it can take about five minutes for a patty. This is the five minute chef, so I'm gonna try this patty in there for five minutes and see how well it does. Okay. I've noticed there's no heat setting for this and the on off doesn't exist. So you have to just unplug it or plug it in, and turn it on or off. Okay. Okay. This is only a quarter pound of meat. I didn't know how big I could really go with it. Seems cooked. Let me cut this open again. This is five minutes, quarter pound of meat. Oh, I got a lot of juice there. Oh, I don't know about that. Nope, 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 nope. That is not cooked. I guess I'll just put it in there for a couple more minutes. All right, it's been two more minutes, so let's see how this looks. Now, because I cut it open, that might means the inside probably cooked a little bit more thoroughly. Still have a little bit of, I mean, that's probably acceptable, but so it went five minutes and then I cut it and then it's two minutes. So I'm gonna do another patty and leave it in there maybe just for seven minutes without taking it out and see how that does. I'm then gonna go eight minutes this time because I won't be cutting it open to see if the center can cook properly this time. So this is hamburger take two. I'm gonna go eight minutes and see what happens. And here it is, patty number two. This is in a quarter pounder. And there we go. All right, while the second hamburger is cooking, I'm gonna try taking a bite out of the first one and see how that tastes. It's juicy, good flavor, it tastes good. I have no complaints. Now I gotta wait for this one to cook and we'll compare the two of them. All right, here we go. This was eight minutes, quarter pound of meat. Well, the outside certainly looks good. Let's see the inside now. Well, This is eight minutes. Um, not really, the, for hamburgers, maybe it's not the five minute, maybe it's the nine minute chef. All right, I'll put it back in here for a little bit longer, but now I've already opened it up, so of course the center is gonna cook. Now, once again, there is no hamburger recipe in the recipe book for this, but it's definitely taking longer than five minutes to cook one hamburger patty in here. So this may not be the best use for the five minute chef. It might be better for other things like the cakes or the eggs, not so much the hamburger patties, because you could do that faster you know, you need to only do one at a time. You could probably do it faster on a George Foreman grill or a regular grill than it is taking in the five minute chef. 
All right, let's see what we got here now. Of course the center is cooked now, because I had to cut it open. Oh, so yeah, now, now of course it looks great, but that's, a, that's over nine minutes in there to get that cooked, and it's cut in half at the same time, so eh, I'm not sure hamburger is really the best idea for the five minute chef. All right, here we are. This is the next day from the original test. I'm gonna do some biscuits here. I've got eight of them. Let's see how long it takes to do eight biscuits. The commercial showed, I think, three at one time. I'm gonna see if I can pull that off. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get more than two in here. And there are no instructions. So it's gonna take four batches. I really have no idea how long to do this. So the first batch I'll do for, I don't know, I'll do for three minutes. Normally these would take 13 to 17 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. Um, if this only takes a couple minutes with four batches, it still might be faster. Okay, three minutes is up. Let's see how they look. Huh, what do you know? This is what we got. Definitely two filled it up. I'm gonna put two more in there and take a look at these. One, two. I think three minutes might be the right number. Okay, while well, batch number two is cooking, let me take a look at these a little bit more closely. Uh, there's a little bit of dough in there. I would say maybe three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Here we go, these look nice. Of course the other ones did too. Okay, these are the three, these are the three and a half. See, that looks slightly undercooked. The rest of it seems pretty good. I wonder if I should go 345 on the next batch. Let's do that. Three forty five. Here we are with 345 now, 345. Let's take a look at this one. So far we've got the three, the three and a half, and the 345. I think 345 might be the number. I don't see any uncooked areas in there. So I'm gonna put the last batch in for another 345 and we'll be done with this section. All right, 345 once again. All right, so I got eight biscuits. It took about, probably about 15 minutes, which that's about how long it would take in the oven also. But if you don't have access to an oven, like you're in a dorm or something like that, it would certainly be a good choice. For my final test, we've got a chicken breast, which they did show in the commercial. I had to cut it down. I had to cut this down to size to fit in there, which is a little bit of a bummer, but we'll see how well it does. No idea how long to put it in here. None. I'm just going to take a guess. I'm thinking five minutes to start. The hamburger took nine. This is probably going to take longer, but I'll see how it looks in five minutes. Okay, it has been five minutes. Let me take a peek here. Well, definitely not done, but it is definitely cooking. I'll go in there five minutes. All right, it's been a total of 10 minutes now, so let's see what we got. Huh. It doesn't look much different than the five minute mark. All right, at 15 minutes, here's what we got. Still white around the edges. I'm gonna flip the entire unit over and see what the other side looks like. That's all the grease from the bottom before. What do you think? I would say that's done. All right, 15 minutes it is. Now the rest of your booklet does have a stuffed chicken recipe that does take 15 minutes and you're supposed to flip the unit over halfway through, which I didn't do. But I think that it did cook evenly. It cooked all the way through, so one chicken breast, 15 minutes, not bad. Now for the final taste test of this chicken from the Five Minute Chef. Here we go. Hmm, a big piece. It's juicy, good, well cooked. I'll keep chewing, I'll finish up later. So there you have it, the Five Minute Chef has some use. I'm not sure it's gonna be for everybody. It'll be good for people that are only gonna make food for one person or maybe someone who's in a dorm or a camper that doesn't have access to an oven. Otherwise, to me, I think it's gonna be like the Red Copper Flip Witch in which was advertised for a lot of different uses, but I only ended up using it for one thing. Have you used the Red Copper 5-Minute Chef or something like it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And please subscribe for more As Seen on TV product reviews from me, James White, for Freaking Reviews.